Oh yeah, hear that sizzle. The old coot here coming back at you with another exciting video. All clad, 10 inch frying pan, right? I'm on the lowest, low, that's medium, that's low. I'm on like almost the lowest I could possibly be on the biggest burner that I have. <coughs> Sorry. And I'm doing some ribeye steaks in here. What I wanted to show everybody is that yes, you can have non-stick pan action, even cooking a ribeye steak. Now, is there some fond building up in the bottom of the pot, or the bottom of the pan? Sure there is. There, there's going to be some browning, you know, in the bottom of the pan. It's not going to be exactly like a non-stick pan would be, but my steak's cooking nicely. As you can see from my little, my little sliced, my accidental slice. So basically what I did was I had a full rib roast and I sliced it myself to make ribeye steaks. That's what you want to call it. Took the bones out, cooked up the bones separately and all the good stuff. But pan-fried ribeye steak in a stainless steel pan, yes, it is possible. You just have to remember to use the biggest burner you have, right? That's the small one. That's the big one. This is like the medium-sized one. See the difference of the two sizes, okay? And then keep your flame relatively low. So I would say between medium and low, I'm kind of like almost just er, like 5.5. Like like if this was if this was zero and this was ten, and like five was straight in the in the middle, I would say I'm at like eh, just a little bit over of, of like five point five of the center. And the trick is low and slow when you're doing your steaks this way. But as I as I accidentally cut my steak the wrong way, it kind of helped me because now I can see what's going on in there. And I don't have to cut my steak in half to know if it's done because all that does is just lets the juices run out and, you know, creates a big watery mess. But another tip is take your steak out about a half an hour before you're ready to cook it in the pan because a cold steak from the refrigerator right in the pan in a hot pan will guarantee that it's going to stick. So take your steak out about a half an hour before. Another trick is, trick number two, let's say, is to lube up your pan. You're going to need to use way more butter or oil or fat than you think you need. And here's an example. This is about the amount of butter that I put in there. This is about two tablespoons here of butter that I put in the pan once I achieve the light and frost effect. Go back to my egg cooking videos, my omelet videos for the light and frost. But basically, you put the pan on, you let it warm up at whatever temperature you think you're going to need. After about three minutes, let's say you put a drop of water in there. If the drop of water dances around like a like a marble, you're good. If the drop of water immediately evaporates, pan's too cold, you need to let it warm up more. If you drop your water in and it explodes like a bunch of firecrackers, it makes little balls and then those evaporate, pan's too hot. So you need to, you need to back off the temperature a hair. But once you get the light and frost effect where you put the drop of water in, the water just dances around like a marble in there. Then you can go ahead and put your butter in, right? At least two tablespoons of whatever. Two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of vegetable oil, two tablespoons of olive oil, whatever you want to cook with. Let that just kind of roll it around the pan. Make sure, you know, make sure you've got like free movement everywhere. You can kind of get the idea. Once the oil moves around, then put your steak in that has been seasoned. Salt, pepper, whatever you want to put, that's totally fine. Okay, so then when it cooks, Usually what I do is about, I'm almost ready to flip here, which I should really do on camera. So three minutes per side, right? And then go another three minutes per side until you've achieved that desired level of doneness. Like I said, I totally screwed up and I did that accidental slice right there, but I think it kind of worked out to my benefit because I can actually see what's going on in the steak. So to flip, just this is a little trick that I do, I just go that way. Just so that in case there's any splatter, it goes that way instead of this way. But I'd say, you know, I'd say these are like almost done. And see, always try to flip into like some oil. So these are like almost done. I'm going to let them go probably like another minute on that other side. And then when I cut inside these, I'll probably have that medium rare-ish, maybe more towards like the medium side, cooked. But... The other trick, one of the last tricks, I don't know, whatever tip we're on now, one of the other tricks is once you flip, just let them sit for a minute before you start moving the pan around. Otherwise, you're going to get stickage. And then another tip after that, a bonus tip is, is once, you take your, once you take your steaks out of the pan, like you've taken them out of the pan, 
let them sit for at least like three to five minutes before you start cutting into them. So if you take them out of the pan, you let them sit for about three to five minutes, what happens is, is all those juices that are in there have a chance to get like sucked up by the meat again instead of if you took your steak and you put it in a pan or you put it in your plate, sorry, you put it in your plate and you cut the steak, what happens is all those juices run out and then you get dry steak. So if you want a nice juicy steak, see now I can go ahead and move my steaks. And don't get me wrong, like I said, there is some like fawn that's building up down there, which is totally fine. What I'll do is I'll take the steaks out, put them into a plate, let them sit for about three to five minutes. And in the meantime, bonus tip here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the heat entirely, right? So let's say the steaks are out of the pan. They're in a plate. They're resting for three to five minutes. What I'm going to do is shut off the heat of the of the all-clad tenants fry pad. And what I'll do is I'll put in about like a tablespoon of lemon with maybe another tablespoon of butter in there and just make a nice little sauce. And you can really do it up if you want. You can put some capers. You can put some... Like finely, finely, finely chopped onion. You can put some finely chopped garlic in there. Whatever you want to do to get that good little pan sauce going. Those are just some little tips or tricks that you can do. And the residual heat of the pan will cook through that lemon, that butter, the capers, the garlic, the onion, whatever else you want to put in there. Chives, you want to get some parsley in there, whatever. And you'll have this beautiful sauce that then you can, that should take you between three to five minutes to do. With the heat off completely, pour that over your steaks. Man, that is heaven. Anyways, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm the old coot, and I'll catch you all in the next exciting video.